Hi kids, it's Julie from Soul Sparklets Art. Today we're going to be drawing my friend the beetle. So this guy is a different type of beetle because he's got these horns. Um, he's often called a stag beetle. But I was on a walk hunting for caterpillars and I saw this guy. Look how shiny and how cool his um, his exterior. This this part right here of the beetle is the part that protects the inner wings. And that's this right here. So his wings are actually underneath this hard part of his shell. And then he's just hanging out on a leaf, isn't he? And he really sticks out. So I thought it'd be fun to draw him using just crayons and using watercolors. And we can design our own beetle and even give him little patterns and put him on his own leaf. So all you're going to need today is you're going to need a piece of paper, you're going to need a black crayon, you're going to need a light green crayon, and then you're going to need some watercolors. Now of course if you only have crayons, you can do this project with crayons too. It'll just look a little bit different. But all I have is a black crayon, a light green crayon, and watercolors. And do you see my crayon? It broke in half right before I started to film this, but you know what? It still colors the same. So I'm going to color with it anyway. So we're going to get started. And the first thing we're going to do is draw our beetle's head. So here's my black crayon and I'm going to go down towards the bottom of the page somewhere. And I'm going to draw a line that looks like I'm smiling or like the letter U. So there's his head. I'm going to close it off with a curved line. I'm going to draw a little tiny curved line above it just to show the separation between his head and his beetle shell. And then I'm going to draw my beetle. Now beetles come in all sorts of shapes and sizes. You can see that this guy has a middle section here and insects do have a head abdomen and a thorax. It's harder to see in the picture here. So we can go ahead and draw that second part by drawing another curved line that goes up and around and it comes back to the head. And then we can go ahead and draw that beetle body. And I want you to think as you're drawing, is your beetle long and skinny? Is he fat? But whatever you do, you're gonna start from the middle section and you're gonna draw a line that goes out and around and comes back. So this is a really long beetle today. And I'm going to draw a dividing line on his back half here. Oops, ended up being a little crooked, but that's okay. And that's to show where this shell kind of comes apart for his wings. Then I'm gonna take my black crayon and I'm gonna give him his eyes. And his eyes don't go in front, they go on the sides of his head. So I'm gonna draw two little ovals on the side of his head. And now I bet you you know what's missing, right? He's gotta have antenna. So my beetle's gonna have long antenna. And you can decide if you want your beetle to have short antenna or long antenna. And now we're gonna work on the legs. Now, take a look at his legs. They're a little bit different, aren't they? They're not one piece, do you notice that? There's one, two, three pieces of this beetle's legs. So we're gonna draw each piece one at a time. And our beetle has six legs. So two in the front, two in the middle, and two in the back. So we're gonna go ahead and draw that. And we're gonna pick um, the front legs first, and we're gonna draw them at the same place so they're symmetrical. So if he's got a leg over here, he's got to have one over here. Otherwise, he'd be a pretty lopsided beetle. So right where our midsection meets our back section, I'm going to draw the first segment of his leg using just a curved line. And it's going to come right back. And I'm going to draw one on the other side. That way I can keep track of where my beetle legs are. Now, Remember, each leg has three pieces. I've only drawn one, so I'm gonna draw piece two. This piece two is gonna be going forward because these are his front legs. So I'm gonna start it, but instead of having it go this way, I'm gonna have this curved line go towards the bottom of the paper. I'm going to do it here, and then again over here. I'm gonna start at this section I just drew, draw a curved skinny rainbow line, like a little skinny U, and you can see this beetle is clearly walking this way. Now he needs a last segment of those front legs, 
and they usually go out to the side a little bit and it's a little bit shorter. So I'm gonna draw a little tiny one here, a little tiny U. And there's his front legs. Now we're gonna add his middle legs and his middle legs can kind of stick straight out to the sides and if you drew your beetle too close to the edge of the paper like I did you might not have room for all of those segments so we can just imagine that his segments of his leg are over here somewhere so when we draw our middle legs we're gonna use the same technique we're gonna draw our skinny U one and one on the other side and then the second part one and uh oh I ran out of room so I'm just going to pretend that my leg keeps on going now you notice I'm not gonna need a third part of my leg over here because it will be sticking off the paper but I am gonna need a third part of my leg here so I'm gonna go ahead and add that right now and now I'm gonna handle his back legs those back legs are gonna go back here back of the beetle so these back legs they're not going forward, they're kind of going a little behind him. So when I draw my U's, I'm going to tilt, tilt it so that it kind of goes towards the top of the paper. One, and then another one over here. I'm going to do my second one like this, and you can see that I might run out of room again. Let's see if I'm going to, yep, it's gonna go right off the paper. So the rest of his back leg would be off the paper. So I'm done with this side, but I need to finish this side. So I'm gonna draw part two. And then the third part of his leg is just gonna go off a little bit at a different angle. And there's three. So he has all of his legs. Now we're gonna be working with watercolors today, if you have them. So I'm gonna take my black crayon now, and I'm going to color in the segments of his legs. So when I use my watercolors, the watercolors are going to be resisted by the wax in the crayon and that means that if there's wax on the paper the paint will just slide right over it. So go ahead and color the legs of your beetle. Color the middle legs. and then the back legs. Now, if you wanna give your beetle a design right now, you can do that. You can give him polka dots and the watercolor will go right over it. Maybe I'll do that. I didn't with my initial sample, but maybe I'll give him a couple of polka dots using my black crayon because remember, when we put the watercolors down on the paper, the watercolors are gonna go right over that crayon. So maybe what I will do is I'll give him some fun spots. So he could almost look a little bit like a longer ladybug. And if he's got one there, then usually beetles are symmetrical. So he'll have one there too. So maybe a little one there. So that means a little one on the other side of that line. And maybe I should do another one right there. And that means there'll have to be another one right here about the same size. Okay, my beetle is done. Now, if your beetle ended up being smaller than mine, then you can always draw another beetle on the same piece of paper. That is absolutely fine. If you are done with your beetles, or when you're done with your beetles, I want you to grab your light green crayon. And what we're gonna use this for is to make the veins of the leaf. So if you look at this picture, do you see how the veins of the leaf are lighter? Well, it'd be really hard to paint all these little tiny veins with a different color green with watercolors. So instead, we're gonna use our light green crayon to draw them instead, and then we can paint the dark green right over it. So we're gonna start from the bottom corner of the paper, and we're gonna draw the main vein, and it's gonna go all the way up through the top here. So I want you to take your crayon and I want you to draw a line and I want you to color pretty hard. When you color hard, uh-oh, I ran into my beetle. When you color hard, the watercolor will go over it better. So when you run into a beetle or beetle piece, I want you to use your finger. It'd still be going this way. The line would come out. Uh-oh, it's gonna run into the beetle again. 
It's going to keep going, keep going, keep going. It'll come out right here. Runs into the leg. Comes out on the other side of the leg. And now I can draw my line all the way to the top. And it's okay if it doesn't end exactly at that corner. You just want the line to go in that direction. So that's the main vein of the leaf. And now we're going to work on those side veins. So I'm going to take my paper and I'm going to turn it a little bit so that my line goes straight up and down. And that's going to make it easier for me to draw the side veins of this leaf. And these, these little veins are going to come out of the side, but they're going to curve towards the top of that line. So one's going to come here, it's going to go up, and it's going to curve off the end of the paper. I'm going to do another one on this side. And then I'm going to keep moving down my line and drawing curved lines that go upward off the paper. Keep going down. Now you might run into a beetle piece here and that's okay. So if I start my line here, it's going to run into my beetle leg and it still is going to curve up and off the paper. Now this line, it would be here and then it come out of this leg somewhere and then up. So now we got a big beetle in the way. So we can imagine that there's a line here. It's going to come out at the tail end of my beetle. This one will go this way. And you don't have to be perfect with these lines because leaves aren't perfect with their lines either. So there will be lines coming out of the tail end of my beetle. And we're just going to keep drawing lines on both sides of this main vein coming down. And run into the antenna. There we go. So we have some lines and they're generally going in that direction. Now we're going to add the smaller lines because if you notice we have these side veins but then there's all sorts of little tiny crazy veins going through so we can add a few. So on each one of your lines you can draw a couple of squiggly lines going in the same direction that these lines are. And these are just those little tiny veins that you can barely see if you flip a leaf over. And sometimes you can see them if it's the top of a leaf, just depending on the type of tree or bush. And I think this wasn't a bush. I think I found this beetle on a flower, on a wildflower in the meadow. So you should have little tiny light green lines kind of going everywhere. And they kind of look yellow. I used a yellow green. So mine might look a little bit more yellow than green to you. But so long as you have light green lines, you could even use a yellow. And they're going every which way. You'll be perfect. So now it's time to put my crayons away. And I'm going to get out my watercolors. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the leaf in the background. So I'm going to get some green and I am just going to paint right on top. Do you see how my lines there are not going to let that paint go over it? Now I put a little bit too much paint on my brush and so now it's a little dark. So I don't need to get any more paint. I'm just getting a little bit more water and I'm spreading that paint around. And sometimes it might look like that paint is going to stick on your lines, but it's not. You can even paint right over these beetle legs. And do you notice how I'm just getting water now? I put so much paint on my brush initially that I have not needed to go back and get more paint. I'm just getting water and the water is helping me smear it. So I don't want to accidentally paint my beetle. So I'm just using more water. to go and take some of that extra paint that I put up there and smear it all around. And I have not had to get more green paint yet. Have you noticed that? I wonder if you've noticed something else. 
Have you noticed that the more water that I have, the lighter the leaf is? So now I'm gonna go back and get a little bit of paint. And do you see how dark that is? So now I can use water again, just water, to smear that green paint around. And every once in a while, if it looks like it's not as green, you can go back and get a little bit more green paint. And darken it up again. And I think I still have enough green on my brush that I can finish painting the rest. And it ends up being kind of fun because you have some darker spots and you'll have some lighter spots. So we have our leaf. So you can tell that now it's time to paint our beetle, right? So I'm gonna clean my brush and I'm gonna take my brush and it has no color on it. Not any color and I'm gonna paint it with water. That's it, just water. I'm gonna paint the back end of a shell and I want to get it wet enough so that I can almost see the water on top of the page. Okay, now I am ready. I'm going to grab some color. I'm going to grab a little bit of orange and I'm just going to touch it. Do you see how the color is spreading? I'm going to get some red and I'm going to do the same thing. And you're going to see that the color is going to magically spread throughout the beetle. Get some more orange. And for this, you only want to pick a couple of colors. So no more than three. Now, if you don't have enough water in certain parts, you'll notice that the paint won't spread. It won't do that magical effect that you just saw. But when it does, all you need to do is touch it. Notice how I'm not painting back and forth. I'm just touching it. And that's it. It's a fun technique. and. The watercolor being able to mix like this and this isn't watercolor paper if you get your paper wet enough and you have sulfite paper it'll do the same thing now if you didn't have enough water back here you can use your brush then to just add some final color if there's some white areas and then if you want you can do that to the other parts of your beetle or you can just paint them so I'm gonna do it to this part too so remember, you're gonna get it wet first. I'm gonna pick a color that is just so different from the red. It's gonna show a really nice contrast. So I'm gonna get some purple. Get some blue. And again, I'm just touching it. and letting it do its magic and spread. Now I think I'm going to choose to just paint the head a certain color and I think I'm gonna to choose to paint the head the same color as the back. So I'm gonna get some red on my brush and here's the difference. Do you notice how the paint isn't spreading? That's because I didn't put the water there first. So the paint's a really dark color and it's staying put exactly where I want it to go. But back there it didn't, did it? So that's because I put the water down first. I'm gonna paint that little tiny middle section. I think I'll get it orange. Put a little line of orange there. And we have this beautiful beetle made with watercolors. Now, if you want to do kind of a fun little starburst technique on your beetle, do you know what you can do that with? Do you see this? This is the best tool ever. It's your finger. You can take your finger and just take a look at that. Give it a little bit of texture. 
and I'm just gonna use my finger for the head, but when it dries, it almost looks like a Petoskey stone or a fossil. So different ways to paint with watercolors. So remember we had, we put the water down first here and we didn't here, but we used our finger to add some texture and then the crayon was able to resist. So if you have crayons and watercolors at home and that's all you have, you can have a lot of fun playing around with these techniques. This right here was just the um, watercolor first without the water on top. And then here you can see how the colors mix together and almost gives it a tie dye approach. So when this dries completely, just make sure when you do this technique that I don't pick up my paper right away because this paint is sitting at the top. And until it dries, if, you, if I pick up this piece of paper, that paint is gonna wanna go somewhere and it's gonna spread and it might run off and that blue and purple might run right into the back of that beetle. So make sure you leave your art project to dry for a little bit first and then make sure you hang it somewhere cool because beetles, right? So I'll be back next week. I'll have something to celebrate um, the launch of my uh, UK and Irish myths and legends. So maybe something with dragons or fairies. So stay tuned for that next week and I hope you have a wonderful week.